Good morning, good morning, magical beings. Anywhere, anywhere, everywhere. My name is Maggie Rose Cunningham. I'm your hostess today. We are going to be diving into looking at, have you ever had a time when you've had a really great idea, you know, inspiration has hit. A Valkyrie has flown down from Valhalla and blessed you with an idea that if it's not going to change the world, it's definitely going to change life for you and your tribe only to find that that brilliant idea that was burning inside you and you had so much enthusiasm for it you had so much motivation for it just withers and and dies you know withers on the vine it disappears and maybe you found yourself like years later thinking why ever happened to that but you know deep down that the motivation has gone for that um, for that particular idea if that's ever happened to you you know let me know in the chat box we're going to be exploring um, today the path of the mystic which is our theme that we are working on through the course of this um, moon this lunar cycle but we're looking at how well your mystic and your magician work together so Rue is saying, absolutely, this has happened for me in the past. You are not alone, Rue. All of us, I think, have somewhere a little um, cupboard of stashed away um, regrets of things that we thought, that could have been mine, that could have been me. Almost like these little life journeys where we go, at some point, I took a fork in the road and it took me away from that destiny that I saw for myself that I could be a part of and that fork has gone but I can still see it I can still feel that version of the tapestry and would have what would have woven through it and, and sometimes these things come and maybe they were never meant to be ours maybe they were simply meant to be a point for us to recognize um okay so my mystic is strong my mystic had a, you might call it a download, you might call it an insight, you might call it a vision, you wanted to take a journey or a quest or it simply popped into your head in the morning when you were having a shower. That's me, by the way, Largo Sun Rune gets me every time. Um, we could be wonderful repositories for ideas. You know, we're journeying out, we are looking beyond the veils, we are open and ready and willing to receive inspiration from spirit. But in order to manifest those ideas, we have to engage a different part of our um, magical toolkit, different part of our magical identity, if you like, and that's the magician. And the magician is the, the manifester par excellence, the one who engages all of their, their practical skills, their magical skills, their ability to work with energy, with emotions, with the mind, with the physical body, to plan, to make change, to transform, and they birth that dream that the mystic went out into the world to, uh, to find. And they birth it into the world. They make it a reality. They weave it with their hands. This is my weaving hands, by the way. I don't know if you can spot that. Weaving hands. So I can see, Candice, you've said that has happened to you today. I can also see some of you already sharing the rune that you're working with as a spirit guide um, through the course of this um, lunar cycle, or you're working with it today. Absolutely fine, whichever way. It's just which rune are you working with um, right now. Let's have a little look at what we're going to be playing with. So we have a bumper crop today because I am going to be covering a two-week period. So we're going to be looking at the waxing moon through the course of this week. And we're going to be looking at the full moon through the course of next week because I'm away on holiday. Yay! So there will be no Middle Earth readings next week, but we, that means we are going to be covering 12 runes today. So the chances that you are here present live and that we're going to be covering your rune are quite high. We've already done six last week. We'll have six more to do when we come to the um, waning moon phase. But I'll let, let me have a little look and see what you've got for me. So we have Algiers, Suki, we're going to be doing Algiers. You've mentioned Rado as well. Yes, Rado is covered. Taywas, no, no, Taywas is not coming up, um, Justine. So you're going to be wanting to feel into um, the direction that Taywas offers. Taywas can be a really fantastic magician rune because it is that um, focused pointedness, not allowing distractions to come through. So that's probably the bit for you to look at is maybe uh, the mystic can get distracted. Because the mystic will say, oh, everything is important. All of the ideas are important. All of the stuff is important. Look at the thing. Look at the thing. <gasps> you know, the magician will say, and choose. Prioritize. 
Yeah. So maybe a little bit there for you. Ewaz Ru, you have. We're going to be looking at Ewaz as today. Hi, Lisa. Lovely to see you. Um, new moon rune for you is Feyu. Yes, we're going to be working with Feyu today. And uh, Kinaz. So no, we're not going to be working on Kinaz. But Kinaz, again, brilliant magician rune that is engaging your creatrix. So that's going to be working with your hands. Um, it could be around manifesting projects that actually require you to, I don't know, get out there and paint the shed or cut down the rose bush, whatever it is that you want to get um, achieved, whatever you want to manifest. Or it could be around um, spell work, creating spell work that has a physical component to it. Um, you've got Radio's Merc Stave as well. Hmm, interesting. So we'll see if we come with Radio, whether that brings any of its um, more negative connotations with it. Carolyn, lovely to see you too. And we are, yes, Iwas. Yes, we're going to be doing Iwas. So that's fantastic. Justine's saying, ha ha, very, very relevant. Feeling that shift. So what I try to do for um, people who are maybe new here is we have our, our power runes, which are selected partially by the planets, the movements of the planets through the course of the week. So we try to feel into the runes that are, are really dominant, their dominant energies, and partially through runes that I've drawn ahead of time for our spirit guide runes. But if you are here live, and only if you are here live, I will try to feel into the ones that aren't um, that, that we aren't going to be covering. And also if you're here live, it just means that in terms of the energy, and I very much believe in the magic of collaboration, that the, the readings that I get are going to be coloured by the people who are present because we are holding our, our space together. But if you are not able to attend live, just set the intention that you are going to get the wisdom that you need today. We're, we're looking for that wisdom. What's the wisdom that you need today? So thank you for sharing your runes. If you haven't done, please do so. If you're watching with the recording, do hashtag replay first so that we know that you're coming up afterwards and still share your rune. And there are so much wisdom in the Half Space group. So often people will comment and they'll say, oh, you know, this is um, this is what I've received. You know, we get lovely chat in the in the chat box with people saying, oh, the same rune that I'm working on. So maybe you'll get some buddies who are also working with the same rune as you. So in order to be successful in the world, you know, in this human incarnation that we have chosen to live in, the mystic needs a well-developed magician. Because otherwise the mystic is receiving all of the time. This could be a great idea, this could be a great idea, and nothing is actually happening. And you may become sort of like weighed down by feelings of, of failure, because I wasn't able to bring the thing into the world that, uh, that I wanted to. It might be that you get sort of so clogged up that your mystic actually stops working properly because there's the ideas aren't, there's no cycle. There's no cycle of receive and express, receive and express. So it's really important to recognize that when we talk about magical archetypes, the different um, aspects of the magical self, that we're recognizing that they work in collaboration with each other and all of them have their downfalls and all of them have their positives as well. So we are going to be looking at um, this week's moon, the waxing moon, and we have one planetary movement this week and it brings with it the theme of utterance. So through the course of this week, we are looking at the magic of the word. And what I would like you to imagine at this point is the Ansu's rune. See if I've got the Ansu's rune to hand. Here it is, so here's the Ansu's rune. This is one of Odin's runes, probably the one most obviously connected to Odin. And it is the, you know, it is a rune of, of, of magic and it's the rune of the breath. And it's got its two staves here. And I want you to imagine that these are the in-breath and the out-breath for the purposes of what we're discussing. So the in-breath is the mystic. I have gone out into the world, I have received wisdom, I have had new ideas, I have received a vision of what is to come, breathing in. And the magician is the out-breath. <sighs> breathing out. You becoming the, the channel for the ideas that you have seen, the visions that you have had to manifest themselves into the world. And it can be very effective if you know that you're stuck in that mystic space to simply work on that as a meditation to start to activate the magician. So like, okay, I'm breathing in, I'm in the mystic phase. And then energetically, I'm starting to push those ideas out. It can also be really helpful for you if you've been stuck in mystic for a while and you've got lots of ideas that you need to release. So Ansu's is one of its um, names is the unfetterer. So before you are ready to step into the magician, it might be that you want to do some magic with Ansu's where you breathe in, mystic, and then you breathe out. I am releasing 
those things that I have not manifested in the past. I trust that I have received the lessons that I needed to from that, um, that there was wisdom and learning for me, but it wasn't the wisdom and learning of manifesting. And there's maybe the wisdom and learning of the mystic. How do I receive in the first place? Claiming that, claiming that as a, a power that you possess that not everyone does. No, not everyone is out there having amazing dreams and receiving in all of the different multiplicity of ways that most of the people in this space will be. And if you are thinking, my mystic isn't developed yet, we can absolutely work on that. So don't worry about it. But at the moment, we're looking at if you have your, if you've been stuck in mystic. And I know a lot of people said last week, they were like, yeah, I can really feel that mystic self coming through. So the Ansu's room will really help as a meditation if you feel like, yes, I'm a little bit stuck in mystic. I'd like to start to move into um, my magician self. Now, the planetary movement for this week is um, Odin's chariot. So Mercury, that is the Roman planet Mercury, is moving into Ansu's and he is moving today. Hooray! So, he, and he will be there until the 3rd of September. So he is really supporting the collaboration between the mystic and the magician. Odin is both a mystic and a magician par excellence. He goes out into the world, he hangs on the world tree, he puts his eye under the well, he becomes the wanderer, he does all of the things. And then he resumes his throne and he makes the magic happen. So fabulous um, room to be working with this week. This is one of our power rooms. This is the first of the power rooms to work with. So if you are working on, well, using the theme that we're working on, this theme of utterance, which is one of the meanings of the Ansu's room is utterance. Um, you can start to do that with the breath meditation that I have discussed. You can also do things like journaling. So what you're going to be looking at, regardless of what your spirit um, rune is this week, and regardless of what other energies you might be playing with at the moment, the dominant energy is one of utterance. It is one of how do I express what I have received out into the world? And it might be that um, journaling might be one way of doing that. Um, I tend to uh, rec do recordings. So I just record myself speaking what I've just seen just to get it there. It's, it's that process of starting to move what has been received internally and to start to manifest it and express it externally. So it might be that you want to connect with a, a, a trusted friend. And this is important when you think about if you have a new idea or a vision and you're going, wow, you know, I really love this, but I'm feeling a bit vulnerable about this. It's not, you know, it's not fully formed yet. I don't have all of the answers yet. Choose who you want to work with carefully. Rue, I can see that you've said that you've got Ewaz to represent the conscious energy and power to write unconscious. Oh, I like that. Um, so Ewaz is one of the runes we're working with. So I'm just going to um, move from Ansu's to Ewaz for a moment because I think it's helpful. So Ewaz represents partnership. And this can be part the partnership of the magician and the mystic. So if you've got Ewaz this week, it is wonderful to be working on your partnership between your mystic self and your magician self. But it is also about selecting who your partners are in the world. So in this expression utterance phase, that is about who do you choose to express your most vulnerable ideas and dreams to. And my suggestion is if you think to yourself, well, I don't have anyone because, you know, when I express things, people are always like, oh, hasn't that been done already? Or doesn't that seem a little bit big? Or they just, you know, don't even respond at all because it, they're just not on the same frequency as you. No. We talked a little bit about this last week, didn't we? The sense of like feeling like an other in your tribe sometimes. Very common if you have a strong mystic as well, to feel as if you are other because you're in connection with stuff that is outside. That's part of the nature of being um, on the mystical path is that you are connected to stuff that is other. Other people don't always get you. And so choosing your, 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 your support is very important. So if you feel like I don't have anyone, use the hearth space. No, this is a safe space. If you are working on one of the programs um, that I offer, like Awaken at the moment, use the Awaken space, use the Mastery space for those of you on Mastery. Use those spaces as safe spaces. You know, in Mastery, we are spending the whole of the, um, the, the first uh, like four months that we're going to be working together looking at um, devoted listening. How do we listen to each other deeply and profoundly without placing our own judgments? on each other. And so finding that partnership is important. So the Airways room, we'll see if the Airways room has got anything else to, to say, but I think that was probably the main things for the Airways room. Here's our Airways room, there. 
the AOIs are in there. So that's one of our spirit guides really for this um, week. And as I said, it is very much, it's not, it, it's about the partnership between the magician and the mystic. And it is also about the partnerships that we look for in our life and that we need. So you're going to be looking, well, who are the partners that my mystic needs in order to take that step forward into the magician? It might be supportive listening. Next week, when we're looking a little bit more at action, it might be more around who are the people who actually are, are able to offer you support, you know, able to do stuff to help you in that way. So we've covered Ansu's and we have covered Ewa's. The next power rune that came up for this week is Lagu's. A couple of people, I'm just getting sure that at least one person said they had Lagu's. <laughs> who said they had Lagu's? Who's flying? Ah, oh, Candice, you said you had Lagu's, didn't you? So Lagu's is interesting because it feels like a very um, mystic rune. Think, oh, you know, it's a rune of water, it's travelling into the other places, it's a gateway between the worlds, it's that gateway between life and death. But if we think about it from the perspective of the magician, it is about manifesting and tending particularly. It's about that nurturing and tending. What is it that my, the vision that I have received needs in order to grow and thrive? And this is quite useful for those of us who maybe we our energy is a bit deplete. We can feel a little bit overwhelmed by um, what we, we see, the, the, the desires that are burning inside us for the world that we want. And then we look at the real world and we go, it is so far away from the world that I want to live in and I want our ancestors to live in. And that can feel really challenging. But what the Lagu's dream says is, don't think about what you can do think about what your vision or your idea or the thing that your desire needs and that is the first step it's a little bit like saying well my plants need to be watered and i can go out with my watering can and i can water all of them but i can also rely on the rain you know or i can look at how can i share the the watering around or i can look at creating a an irrigation system there's lots of different ways in which I can ensure that my tender plants, I'm doing this because my garden's there, by the way, and it's just started raining, which I think is quite um, funny, bearing in mind what I've just said, um, that the first thing is to say, okay, this plant needs nourishment. What type of nourishment might it need? Does it need fertilizer? Does it need soil? Does it need shade? Does it need light? Rather than focusing on what I need to do. So this is what Lagu's is saying. And then you can look at the, you know, how might I get that later? This is the utterance week. So at this point, we're just expressing our ideas. So that's what Lagu's um, offers to us. Now, our next power rune here we have is um, Athala. So Athala is the rune of estate. It's the rune of um, inheritance. I don't think anyone in the chat said that they had Athala. Forgive me if they did. But um, yeah, let's look at let's look at Athala. So. Athala very much, it says, um, this is a retrospective rune at this point. So it's saying, okay, so maybe you've had a, an idea for something that you want to bring forward, or you've done a journey, or you've done, done a reading, or your mystic has been active in some way. And then it says, oh, this could be possible. Athala says, look back at a time when you achieved something that was similar to what you now want to achieve. You know, there might not be something there, but there might be. So that's the first step for Athala, it says, Look back over your own lifetime. Uh, this is a little bit like doing, a, for those of you who've done a symbol right with me, this is a little about reminding yourself of what is possible, of what you have achieved in the past. This is what have I achieved in the past that gives me some skills or some energy or some experience or some knowledge that I can activate in the moment, is what the Atharlarine offers. Then it broadens out. And it says, okay, where else can I find inspiration? Do I have anyone that I know who has achieved something similar? Who might I need to reach out to for um, mentoring or support or advice or guidance or counsel? So extending out further. And this at this point is only about the ideas piece. This week is about like, writing the list. Who might I draw on? Um, when I do coaching with people, this is one of those times where you would do a list and then you would go, who else? And then you would write some more. And then you say, who else? And then you'd write some more. And then you would say for a third time, who else? And then you would write some more. And you get really annoyed with yourself. You know, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if I'm your coach at this point, you're going, really, you're gonna ask me again? Yes, I am, because often 
the best ideas come later. No, they're not the most obvious. That's your mystic again, by the way. Now, the mystic can supply some of the answers to what the magician needs. So the final piece then is what other inspiration do you need? And for me, when I'm really like, oh, mystic was so difficult and so hard, I look at things like um, Stonehenge and the pyramids and, you know, the amazing like dams for water that have been created. I look at the things that you just go, how did a whole, even a collection of tiny human beings with their tiny frail bodies do that? How did they do that? And they did. And if they did it, then we can do it. So that's what the Athala rune offers. It's very much about that in-gathering of Herminia, of um, luck, of self-belief, you know, that, that um, and sort of activating your mystic to support your magician there a little bit you know let's let's take a journey back and see what happens there okay so that is our athala rune then we have oh i'm feeling the eyewares rune that was um carolyn wasn't it you had the eyewares rune carolyn i'm fairly certain yes your rune is eyewares so eyewares so eyewares similar to athala it's quite an earthy quite a grounded rune both of them have the earth energy and they also have some fire energy so athala has that sort of the hearth fire or the ancestral fire um iwas is known as fire's keeper uh, it's thought that maybe that's because it symbolizes yew wood and yew wood is quite a slow burning um wood that you could have kept embers inside a casket of yew wood i think i might hear this it seems is it stephen pollington I've, um, i'm not going to say that it definitely was possibly sven plowright i get confused between the two because they're s and p as we learned at the beginning um, who's, who suggested that maybe that's what the, the meaning was, was this sort of keeper of embers. So it contains fire within it. So Iwas offers us this um, um, this support again. So we had support in terms of looking at the Athala room. We thought about support in terms of the Lagos room, but very much from different perspectives. You know, the Lagos was about what support does my project need. The Athala room is about, was about experience, you know, experience, mentoring, inspiration. The Iwas room is activated more um, magically in some ways so it can be again working less on the you know writing a list or doing some actions and more on really feeling into um, like a, a meditation you know we were working with the Ansu's rune and we were doing the breath so for the Iwas rune what I would recommend for you is if you're if you've drawn your Iwas rune is working with the breath but um, why can I let me just see if I can get my staff out bear with me one moment because it'll be easier to demonstrate it if I can get my staff out is she going to play ball? I've got lots of staffs. Um, they're all in a little collection. Okay, here we go. So this is my longest staff here. If you look, you can see she's got some. Um, she's got some eyes. She's looking out. She's got eight eyes, in fact, and a crystal at the top. And she's got the runes on her. She's got all twenty-four runes. So what I do is I get my staff and I put my staff in front. And instead of working just on the breath and feeling the in-breath of the mystic rune and the out-breath of the mansu, um, the Ansu's rune, I start to use the staff as well. So as I'm breathing in, I'm breathing energy in up through my feet and it's coming up into me and then it's coming down. And as I breathe out, I breathe it into the staff. It goes down into the staff. The staff channels that energy down into the ground and I visualize a web of light emanating from the base of the staff activating the resources that I need, activating the stuff that I require to come to me from the world for the thing that I want to manifest. And then I breathe in again and I imagine drawing that energy in through my feet and I breathe in. And then as I breathe out, I feel it going down my arms again. And I breathe it back down into the ground again and I see that web getting bigger and bigger and I don't need to know at this point exactly what support I might need I could have done my Lagos exercise or my Athala exercise I could have done a number of exercises to start to I could have done some journaling now we talk about utterance so I could have done that work first but when you're thinking about um working uh, you activating your magician self your magician works on the basis that the mystic has done that bit already I don't need to remember every single detail and I as the magician trust that the universe has my back. So I literally visualize the outcome that I'm looking for and then I do this work and again I just every time I breathe out I just breathe out the outcome okay I've done my bit giving that to the universe 
sending the energy down into the earth and then drawing it back up into me. And you can do that as many times as you want to, to feel as if you're really activating your magician and you are sending energy towards the project that you're going to do. So that's a really nice one to work like practically with a star and to work with the eye wires rune. Put my stuff back again. Thank you very much for helping us there for our practical demonstration. Um, and what I would say is, you know, that is great and wonderful. Do the other stuff as well, you know? It's all well and good raising the energy that is perfect and fabulous, but the universe is gonna look at you and go and say, okay, you've done the energy raising now, um, what's the practical action that you're going to take? So if you're doing this work this week with your staff, with your iOS staff, or you could do it with a branch, it's absolutely fine. Um, make sure that next week, when we move into the quiet um, action, you, you do something that is your contribution towards manifesting that outcome as well. Okay, so that is our iWaz rune. And I think we've got one more rune that we haven't covered. We've done Lagus, we've done Ansus, we've done Ewaz, we've done Athala, we've done Eyeless. Yeah, so our final rune for this week, remembering that we're doing a double episode, so we're gonna go through next week in a moment, is Wunyo. Now, Wunyo is the rune of joy and happiness and belonging and ecstasy. And it's, it's interesting because for the mystic, bearing in mind that our overview is looking at the mystic, for the mystic self, it can represent the journeying out into the space of ecstasy, where we lose ourselves and we are tuning into the bigger picture and we're using that wunyo energy to expand outwards. We are in our caterpillar phase, imagining what it's gonna be like to be a butterfly somewhere in the caterpillar's body that outcome is known but it also symbolizes the belonging of when the mystic comes back and returns to their people and the absolute importance of that journey for the mystic now when we talk about um bright staves merc staves we can also look at the um archetypes of the magical self and we can say well there are positives for all of them, there are also negatives for all of them. And the, the difficulty of the mystic pathway, which we discussed last week more, is that piece around loneliness. So finding your tribe, finding your people, um, recognizing that perhaps a vi you may have received a vision and it is possible, particularly if you have a very strong mystic energy, that it isn't your job to manifest what you have seen into the world, it is your job to share it. So the Wunyo rune says, find the people who are filled with joy from your message. Now you will remember some of you who were here last week, and if you've been in a half space, that Karen shared her response to Middle Earth readings that we did last week. And it resonated incredibly strongly for other people as well. And it may well be that Karen is going out there to do some wonderful you know, magic work to bring what she saw into fruition but she has also sown a seed for so many of us as well through that through her sharing in the half space so this is what the wunyo rune says it says find those people who need to hear that message and who will celebrate that message with you now this also connects with a very important planetary shift a very powerful planetary shift that we are going to have next week um which is Ud's chariot so that's uranus is moving into Ingus, and Ur's chariot does not move very frequently. So this is a very big shift, symbolizing moving from the sort of watery energy, slight uncertainty energy, felt at a very collective and a very subconscious level, into the possibility of sowing new seeds, of patience and waiting and sowing new seeds, and knowing that the actions that we take now are going to have big ripple effects for the coming years, decades, centuries. So very important energy. So that sense of saying, sometimes my job is simply to plant the seeds. You know? um, going back to the Lagos rune actually, that r reminds me that sometimes we, somebody else's mystic activates something in us. And then we say, well, how do I tend to the vision that somebody else has had? So if you've got a strong magician, you might be looking at, you might be following a vision that somebody else has shared and saying, well, I know that I can bring some of that into the world. I can bring that work into the world. Okay, so that is our, this, that's this week. So let me look and check that, um, what other comments that we've got for this week before we uh, move on to next week. 
Rue says, I got Largus of Venus retrograde. Hmm, interesting with your Largus energy there. Hi, Siri, lovely to see you. You're still with Feu, but you also have Taywas. Okay, so we're going to be covering um, Feu as well. We did a little bit on Taywas, didn't we, for Justine there? So that's there. Carol, you've got Manners as your spirit rune. And for this week, Ansu. So we're going to be doing, well, we've done Ansu's already. We're not covering Manners um, today. Um, Christina, wow, as soon as I posted this, you happened to cover Ansu's. Ha ha, there you go. It's always the way, isn't it? Synergy in action. And Candice is a great example. We cut the trees in our garden so I can easily find my stave stave to be created. Yeah, how exciting. The staff is coming. Maybe that was, maybe I was just saying, yeah, this is the idea that needs to come into form as the creation of your staff. How exciting. Okay, so as I said, bumper episodes. If you want to take a breather, take a breather. Have a glass of water. Shake out the energy of this week a little bit. We're just going to fast forward into next week. So we're moving from that waxing moon energy of utterance through the course of this week, remembering that journaling, that sharing, that bringing ideas into manifestation piece. Perhaps doing some magical work with your Ansu's rune or with your Iwas rune. Um, or you, obviously there's so many things that you can do um, magically with, with all of the runes. Those are just two examples. And feeling into the full moon energy. So next week we're starting on the 31st of July. The full moon is on the 1st, uh, or 1st of August, I should say. She went back a month there. So 31st of July, 1st of August for the full moon. And the full moon is going to be in Algis. Let me just get my Algis rune. But we do have a planetary movement to cover before we get to Algis. So there's my Algis rune. It's just a sort of gentle supportive energy um, that yeah it feels nice it feels good safe and you remember I talked about the Valkyrie at the very beginning I said imagine like the Valkyrie coming down and whispering in your ear and saying here's some inspiration for you with this piece we can imagine the Valkyrie maybe behind us so it's sort of rainbow colors just saying I've got your back now I'm here for you I'm ready to go the magic is there to support you when you need it. So just maybe feel into that for a little bit. Maybe feeling your roots going a little bit deeper at this point. Remembering that when we get into that full moon energy, we can draw on that. We did some drawing up of the energy from the earth with the Iwas rune. When we get the full moon energy, we can draw on the energy of the full moon. There's that flow of, of weird coming in as well. Hi Esther, lovely to see you. Um, if you've just come in, we have just covered the coming week. We're covering next week, we're covering the full moon week, so you can watch the replay in order to see um, last week. So on the 31st, on Monday the 31st, as I say, there is no Middle Earth readings because they will not be here, which is why we're covering it today. We have um, Suna's chariot, so the sun is moving into Thurisaz. Thurisaz. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. So here's the Thurisaz rune, the rune of the thorn, the rune of the giant sort of pointy energy saying go go move forward move forward now this is a contrast if you think about the Ansu's rune which has been a really dominant rune through um, this week then we move into Thurisaz and they are their partner runes they can clash if we're working to master them they can clash it's almost the partnership between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind or the mind and the body or order and chaos but they do work together they do activate that that wildness within us and that um, action. So Thurisaz says, okay, you know, you've had loads of ideas. What are you going to do with them? Now, there's a little bit of how are you going to protect your time? What are you going to get rid of in order to bring forward some some actions? And because it's soon as chariot, uh, the sun, when the sun moves into the sphere of a particular room, it brings forward the most, the purest form of that energy. So if Thurisaz is a rune that comes up for you repeatedly in readings, it's a good idea to maybe go and do one of the meditations on the Magin Rose website or if you're an Awaken you can go and revisit your, um, or I say if, if you've done Awaken before you can revisit, obviously if you're on Awaken now we're going to be working on Thurisaz anyway, doing your meditations, doing healing work with the Thurisaz rune, really working on it as a, an activator for your power. And that's the way that I would like you to think about it. And the thing with Thurisaz is that <sighs> activating our power can sometimes be uncomfortable because the world likes us to just have a little bit of power. 
and just the power that um, you know our society approves of at this particular time or the power to create whatever it is that you know if we're in a job you know it, our power is constrained and constricted Thurisaz doesn't really like that you know Thurisaz wants you to express your power in your own um, authentic way and to call forth the wildness from within and to stand in your fully embodied power and it does bring things in bring in things like um conflict so when we, when we start moving into the um the thurisas week we've had our ansu's week to express and to explore uh, bearing in mind you remember that i covered that frigg's chariot is in retrograde as well venus is in retrograde as well you'll remember that i was talking about if you knew that conflict was simply um, inevitable, it was just going to happen. Yeah? The Thurisas room brings that through a little bit more. And really it says, if you knew that conflict was inevitable, that was just going to happen, there was nothing you could do to avoid it. This is the healer coming out here and they'll be going, oh no, I just want to heal everything and for everyone to be happy and for it to be great. No, if you've got a strong healer self, it's going to be uncomfortable. It is really, it's recognizing that maybe when I'm in conflict, when I'm um, feeling conflict around me, when I'm having difficult conversations, that is part of the healing process. But there might be a little bit of reclamation work to do there. We're not covering the healer um, archetype through this cycle. We will do that another time. But your healer may not enjoy this week because it's already got, we've already got um, Frigg's Chariot in retrograde. So she's gone away, her sort of peace weaving um diplomacy is absent but Thurisa says that sometimes that's needed you know when new ideas spring forward imagine um a seed in the ground and you've watered it with your lovely lagu's energy and then the ground has to split to allow it to come through so you might get some of that splitting so if you feel like i'm finding this week really uncomfortable then go hooray Thurisa says good way to do it i welcome Thurisa says i will continue on this path and trust that eventually the new seed will break through and it'll all be good in the world. So uh, it is, um, it's worth bearing in mind that what Thurisas offers when we are working, when we've already done our mystic journeying, our connecting with vision, what it offers is the action that we need to take, the necessary action that we need to take. We're not talking about uncontrolled, all over the place, coming from unprocessed emotions and just being triggered into loads of stuff and you may well have people around you who are doing that um sorry that was a bit coax coach speak there with them triggering um people just losing them you know losing their proverbial um all over the place and you're like why why is this happening that is one aspect of thurisas but it is also an incredibly powerful room when we are channeling it with intention towards our desired outcomes and then it is a very positive beautiful golden energy thor with his hammer blessing the land bringing it down imagine this huge hammer coming and going down on the land and it reverberates out and the land splits and the new world births from that place that's what we're thinking about with thurisaz but it can feel uncomfortable when we're, when we're um when we're working with it but all to the good so necessary action with thurisaz then we have our full moon in algis and as i have said that is the protector so if you're feeling like oh this is a little bit difficult and i'm actually feeling that i want to move back into my shell you know or life is a bit tough and move back into my shell and maybe i'll wait until you know I might wait until next year before i manifest this particular idea this is where some of the our ideas die because we are going through the birthing process and this is the point where we bring algis and you can imagine a a beautiful um, rainbow cloak behind you and imagine that you are wrapping it round yourself <sighs> breathing into that with the algae's room with the full moon energy and then saying I'm doing it anyway I'm doing it anyway so don't stay in your algae's cloak too long this is just about saying okay I'm recentering I'm refocusing I know that spirit's got my back I am doing the thing I am taking the action and it is supported and it is correct and I know that it is correct if you need to you can do a rune reading for yourself you know what's happening here how do I take action how do I move through this work with your spirit guide runes to help you with this but if you have the algis rune it is about saying you know protection is available for you when you're struggling 
and allow it to come and to be there. If you're having a, a disagreement with somebody, it can also be handy to imagine that you have a beautiful Valkyrie standing behind you with a flaming sword saying, Go! You've got this! You know? It's a sort of Thurisazi Algazi combo in your Valkyrie there is what you're looking for. So those moments when you're um, you feel conflict or you feel discomfort, embracing the Thurisaz and, and drawing in the Algas to support you um, with that. Okay. Next rune that we're going to be working with. Well, let's do Rado actually, because then on the third of August, and I remember that um, I'm still remembering that Rado reverse that you mentioned, Lisa. So on the third of August, we have Odin in Rado, and this again is an an action rune. It's a moving forward rune. So Algus is saying, "I've got your back. You can do this. Move forward." And Thuris is saying, "You must. These are necessary actions that need to be taken." Rado is about momentum. So Rado says. What is the first step that I can take? And it's um, very much, again, that combination of the mystic and the magician. So it's sort of saying there might be times when you don't, you don't have all of the answers and so therefore you don't move forward. You go, well, I, I, don't, I don't know what the next step is, so I, I can't possibly move forward until I have all of the answers done. You know, I've got a project plan mapped out for how all of this is going to work. And therefore you don't do the thing. Again, remember that this is a week where your ideas either come to die or to take root and seed. So we want them to take root and seed. So the Rado rune says, what is the first step that you can take? Rado, the rune of the road, the rune of ritual, right action, momentum, moving forward. So whatever it is that you have in mind, it is saying, what is the first step that you can take towards that goal? Do not let this week pass without having taken at least one positive action in the direction you want to travel in. This is a really important week with um, the Urd's chariot moving into um, Ingus for sowing seeds energetically. So I want you to think about, um, imagine that whatever the actions are that you take, they don't just symbolize, oh, you know, I really wanted to ah, dismantle a Wendy house, get it to the tip, go find a wardrobe, a desk and a cupboard for my child, disassemble them with my trusty screwdriver, transport them with my two children in the back. They were very good. Bring them back, carry them all up the stairs, assemble them all, have them all done in the space of one day. Woohoo! That's what I spent Saturday doing. Um, <laughs> it's not just about those are the things that I did. It's about setting an energy that you are going to have access to for a long period of time. Um, Uranus is going to be, or Ud's chariot, for those of you who know which one that is, is going to move into Ingu, the rune of seed sowing until September 2024, so we have a year of this energy that we can set fabulous intentions for through the course of the full moon week. So if you think about it less in terms of um, particular actions that you need to do and actually in terms of the energy that you bring to the actions that you are taking, okay? I put in the chat if that doesn't make sense, but I hope that it makes sense, and this is what the radar rune is saying. One step forward, what is the energy that I want to bring? You know, have a little dance party when you've done that first action. Do whatever it is that you need to do. Be in joy. Remember the Wunyo rune, you know, as when you are doing this through the course of the full moon week. Okay, so that's our Rado uh, energy. So this is Odin very much, you know, he's saying, take the first step. The mystic will know the next direction. You know, the magician might not know, the mystic does. Take your first step. Odin, the wanderer, you know, with the Wado, Rado rune. Wado rune? The Rado rune. It's wandering the paths. Trust. You know, let your magician trust your mystic that the next step will unfold. Okay, then we have, we're going to look at the, anything else in terms of planetary movements? Yes, let's look at the Ingus rune now because we have our planetary movement of Urd's chariot moving into Ingus. So here's Ingus, the rune of the seed. Here we go, little Ingus rune here. And as I said, so Urd's chariot has been in Largus for a long period of time. So Urd is the norm of the past of that which was. So she governs, um, 
it's this really you might think about her as bringing in the energy of all three of the Nornir the past the present and the future it's that interface between the past and the future it's saying in order for x to happen y must happen you know and when the the, the Valkyrie fly out and they send you a little you know this this might be the thing this is the this is the shaping of destiny. You might imagine that there are a number of Valkyrie who all say, well, you know, we need to do something about climate change. I would really hope and think that the Valkyrie are interested in that. You know, they want the human race to continue. And they're not just sending out a message to one person. They are going out to the world and they're whispering to lots of people and saying, what could you do? You know, what's the action that you could take? And when Ud was in Lagus. This was around cleansing. This was around cleansing and flowing and releasing and healing and um, karma. No, I know that's a different um, tradition, but it's a helpful term. Uh, the flotsam and jetsam floating up through the waters of weird, joining with that Hellas chariot in Perthro energy to bring the old stuff. But now we are into the space of sowing new seeds. You know, a year of sowing new seeds. Ben, I can see that Ingus is your moon for the month, so that is perfect. You are in the most powerful space. Well done. And so, again, this might be about saying I'm actually going, you know, there are things that I want to have achieved and I haven't achieved them. Now is a great time, even if it's just one small action or you're writing down what you want to do making sure that you're setting those intentions and you're planting them as seeds and you're perhaps watering them a little bit it's not that i have to do everything but it is recognizing that this is a really powerful time to to set those intentions and it's also about saying now is a time to set the energy that i want to bring through the course of this year um let the valkyrie see you let the fates see you stand in your power knowing that when you do that energetically you're creating the channels of Urog through which your weird, your energy will flow through the coming year. So the Ingus is a rune of gestation and seed sowing. So, you know, it's like, think about it as whatever you're doing now, these are the acorns from which your mighty oak trees are going to grow, is the way that you want to think about that. So whatever it is that you want to do, sow the seeds, get them done, um, and then you've got still a long period of time to finish that manifestation piece okay final two runes that we are going to work on let me just have a little look and see what um if anyone else has bought any runes that they haven't covered we've got some ansies we've done ewas ingus fabulous that was trish with, trish with ingus as well i'm glad that you had that one too well sorry you've got a as well haven't you excellent so we'll look at Feyu next. Fabulous. Okay, so the Feyu rune. So Feyu is, um, it complements and works really beautifully with the Ingus rune. So if you imagine that um, the Ingus rune is very much associated with um, Frey, um, the Feyu rune is very much associated with Freya. So they're brother and sister, some people see them as twins, some people see them as um, Thesso, but some people see them as partners, but um, largely as brother and sister. Um, and so Ingus is the rune of the divine masculine, so down into the earth, being reborn in the earth, in the belly of the divine feminine, and then coming back up. Feyu is the nurturing life force from the divine feminine at the very, very beginning of the Futhark. Ingus is right towards the end. Feyu is right at the beginning. This, and so this is very much about investment. So you can see this, as we talked about Lagus, didn't we, about watering and tending. Feyu is a little bit more about investment, and this is about the investment of our energy and what we want to do. So again, if you think about it in terms of sowing seeds, this would be about what do I need to in invest in my time, my energy, my um, wealth that is going to um, generate and wrap itself around the, the Ingu seed. It's going to give that life force, send that life force towards the seed. So I, for example, I just bought, um, I, I bought myself actually, I knew that I needed some new notebooks because I have some projects that I want to bring into fruition. And I was like, I'm gonna create some, get some new notebooks so that I can really start to capture them and journal around them using this week of utterance. I bought myself two notebooks and I went out yesterday and I saw my mum and dad and it was their birthdays. And you know, obviously I had bought them presents, but they're my mum and dad and therefore they had bought me presents. And independently, they had both bought me a notebook 
very nice notebook. So I've ended up with four notebooks now, which is good because I did need more. Um, but you know, I invested, I was like, well, I'm gonna spend some money on my new notebooks and then more came my way. That, that is what Feyo Energy does. So when you're thinking about your magician, you're going to be thinking about, I might not be able to like afford or have time for or energy for the manifestation of my full desire for the world. You know, whatever your big dream is, maybe at this point you can't just go, click your fingers and it's there but there is a sense of saying I'm going to activate the magic through investment of time or energy and obviously in our culture a, a lot of that is a lot of that energy is symbolized by money but it's not the only way that you can work with investing your time and your energy into saying this is where I want my my energy to flow you know this is where I want it to flow Justine says you can never have too many notebooks you're so right Justine so right and then our final rune is um, Gibo. There's the Gibo rune. So for those of you who've received the Gibo, and I don't think there's anyone in the chat who's got the Gibo rune, but um, let me know in the replay, you know, hashtag replay, if, if, if Gibo was your rune, um, is a, it's a slightly different energy. It is that energy of exchange. So whereas Feyu is like that trust, it's sort of saying, this is where I want my um, energy to go, and then I'm gonna trust that more stuff is gonna come through and it's gonna be great. Gibo is a, a gifting, Rune, so it does have that same intentionality of saying um, it's not what I put my money where my mouth is it's I'll put my commitment where my mouth is so again at the full moon week if you want to do a symbol right where you um, make pledges for what you would like to achieve moving forward the intentions that you want to set really good time to do it so if you've got the Gibo rune I would encourage you to do that you know, it does again. They don't need to be big. These can be um, small, quiet actions that you take um, in order to move forward. It could be a simple like that you do with your family, and you say, you know, you know that thing that I wanted to do. I'm just gonna um, do the. I'm take take the first step, and you announce it. You know, you say it. You get some accountability for doing it. So it is partially about um, voicing those commitments and having witnesses for those commitments. Um, but it is also about making sure that there aren't things that you are holding on to. Remember we, we, at the very beginning we looked at the Ansu's rune meditation and that release meditation? The Gibo rune is saying whatever you are carrying forward at this time, you will be carrying forward for the next year. Because you, this is your little bag of seeds. I'm thinking like um, Jack and the Beanstalk. So Jack and the Beanstalk, he sells the cow, he sends his Feyo energy, energy out, he sells the cow, and then he gets these beans, and he takes them home. And at that moment, as he's travelling down the road, you know, radio room, with his beans, Feyo, and he goes home, those beans that he has are already there. They will bring forth the what he wants in the world and we know that what he wants in the world he wants to be able to care for his mother to have a better life you know all of those things and they will bring that to him so think about yourself as jack and the beans what am i carrying now and if i am carrying anything that is oh no i didn't do that thing and i feel really bad because i didn't know that let it go use the anesthesia to let it go so that when you come to your full moon week and if you have your gibo rune and you're setting new intentions you're doing so from a place of power let me see what we have got. So Justine says, for the rune reading for the year and the Heimdall Nine Mothers reading, both were Gibo for me in August. So that's incredibly important for you then, Justine. So the, the Heimdall and um, Nine Mothers readings, they're both in the half space in a circle for people if you're wondering about that. Um, so absolutely, yes. Working on releasing and having that, that visualisation of sowing the seeds. Now the final thing that I wanted to say for this full moon week, and I think it's important, is that you know, when I'm sort of saying, you must sow the seeds now, sow them now, it can sound a little bit like, oh, no, what if I don't sow them, this is going to be bad. These are small, quiet actions. We're not in the space of like taking like massive, big actions. And you might want to think about, like if you've read Lord of the Rings, like Gandalf taking his time before he goes out with the company to go and get the ring, you know, he assembles these companies, doesn't he? And he takes his time, he goes and he meets the different people. If you think about it with um, The Hobbit, you know, he, he susses out the land, he gets the maps, he knows what's going, he, he knows who is needed in order to, he does a lot of prep work beforehand. 
So he might have on his list before he gets to um, you know, go and defeat Smaug. Uh, visit Frodo. Right? One action on in on in in that direction is what he would be um, he would be using. So that's you know a, a magician idea. You might also think about it for those of you who are more of Harry Potter fans. This is perhaps a Dumbledore moment. Dumbledore off doing all his thing, and Harry's getting really annoyed because he doesn't know what Dumbledore's doing. And, Dumbledore's speaking to different people and getting stuff all ready, knowing that he's going to die. I hope that's not a spoiler to um, people, but you know, he's going to die. He's not going to be there. So his job is to take those small actions that are going to achieve the vision, even though he's not going to even be there to see it. You know, small actions that are going to bring you forward and get you into momentum, sowing seeds through the course of this um, week. So that concludes our bumper episode of Middle Earth readings. The only other thing I wanted to say is that at this point I have two coaching spaces available for one-to-one -one work with me at the moment. If you are interested in working one-to-one -to, -one to develop any of those aspects of your magical identity of seeing how they work together, of helping you know, your magician and your mystic to play well together, or looking at your healer or your seer or your sage, get in touch, send me a message and we can connect. So have a wonderful two-week period. I will not see you next week. Um, enjoy. And in the Suki said, thank you, Maggie, you're off to travel in Africa. Oh, yes, of course. You had your travels and no internet at all. Have a wonderful time, Suki and Justine. I'm really glad that you love that. Visiting the Hobbit. So it's much easier than defeating. It is. It's the first step, isn't it? And if Gandalf had known all of the things, you know, or if Frodo, you know, when he was like you know, to take the ring to Mount Doom, if he'd known... Would he have gone? I don't know. He didn't think they, they never thought they could achieve that, but they just took the next step. That's all we're that's all we're doing. Sowing seeds, taking the next step. I will see you all very soon. Love and blessings to you all.